Now, given uh, our definition of um, state transition systems and execution, we are going to look now what is uh, look at what's the definition of asynchronous and synchronous systems. So remember, an execution is an infinite sequence starting from initial configuration and applying events one after the other. So uh, we will define now the notion of applicability of an event, and it is a very simple notion. It's basically saying that a computation event first can be represented as a triple hmm? with a state S1, S2, and an I, which means that uh, this is a computation event by uh, process uh, PI, and it is um, performed on, a st on the state S1 and resulting in a state S2. And uh, we say that this is um, is a computation event if f of process i maps state s1 to s2. Now, uh, just a very intuitive notion of w when an event is applicable. So we say a computation event is applicable in a certain configuration. If actually the node uh, j happens to be in state S1 in that configuration. Oh, so that is, uh, I think, clear. If we look now uh, for the applicability of delivery events, so we say a delivery event from node uh, I to J of a message M is applicable in the configuration C if M is actually in the output buffer of node I hmm, in the configuration C. This is easy. You can see it here. Is an example execution where we can see an applicable computation event. This computation event, uh, described by this way, is applicable because we have the input state. The input buffer is in. That is the input buffer, and that is the output buffer, and uh, the event will transform uh, the state of. Uh, P2 from this state to this state. So, if an event is uh, applicable in a certain configuration, well, we say then applying the event E in this configuration will uh, give us um, a new configuration after the perf performing the event E. So if we are in a configuration C or C1, applying E on C will give us a new configuration C1. C. Mm -hmm. Yep, new configuration C2. So now let us look to the asynchronous model. And the asynchronous model, our processes are deterministic, uh, as we described by the state transition function. Uh, given some message, we update the state and send messages and wait and continue. And the non-determinism comes from the asynchrony of the whole system in the following sense. We can have a system where we have many, the state of many processes here. So this is the state uh, we call it of process uh, P1, P2, P3. So um, at any configuration, we can perform a computation event in any one of the processes, and that's why it's um, there are possible um, computation events that can be performed. And there are also possible uh, delivery events that can be performed. And we can, in different execution, 
choose one or the other. So in one execution, we choose a delivery event over, say, a competition event, and so on. So that actually gave us uh, a situation to uh, model that messages takes arbitrary uh, amount of time to be delivered and processes uh, execute at a different speed. So what is in the asynchronous model, what we define something called a schedule. And a schedule is a sequence of events. Okay. So event synchrony is determined uh, by when we perform a delivery event. And um, process speed is determined by when we perform uh, a competition event. And so all non-determinism is embedded in the schedule. And the schedule, uh, there are many different possible schedules. Basically. So given an initial configuration, the schedule determines the whole execution. And as we know, uh, the schedule, uh, not all schedules are allowed in the initial configuration. It's only the schedule of applicable events. In fact, at any configuration, we can only uh, schedule applicable events. So what's admissible execution in the asynchronous model? In the asynchronous model, an execution is valid, or we call it admissible, if each process has an infinite number of computation steps. Uh, we can always uh, perform a computation step in a process because a computation step can also be dummy. It can ignore incoming message, just perform a dummy local computation, and it uh, might not produce any output messages. So, um, so each process has an infinite number of computation events, and each applicable computation event is actually performed, is eventually performed. So in a schedule, in the sequence of execution, uh, all computation uh, events are eventually performed. And each applicable delivery event is also eventually performed. So it means we cannot delay a process indefinitely or we cannot delay a message in the network indefinitely. So why we talk uh, about uh, infinity in the sense that each node has uh, an infinite number of um, computation events? Well, uh, we would like to distinguish between um, later, between uh, nodes that are running and did not crash, and node that will eventually crash. So a correct node, a node that, that is running in the system, will always have some events to execute, some computational events. Uh, and even if the algorithm finishes, we, s we can say that the nodes perform uh, dummy transitions or dummy events. So that is the um, asynchronous system. The only thing that it um, it matters for us in the asynchronous system was we could delay execution um, of competition events and um, delivery events uh, at arbitrary amount of say, uh, steps, but eventually they are executed. Okay. Now we look to the synchronous systems. Synchronous distributed system execution happens in lock steps, and execution are partitioned into non-overlapping rounds, non-overlapping rounds. So what happens in each round? Informally, in each round, each process can send a message to each neighbor. So you start by, and all messages are delivered. 
and every process computes based on the message uh, received. This is what happens in each round. Okay. To say it more exactly, in uh, a synchronous system, execution is partitioned into the joint round, and a round consists of deliver events for every message in all output buffers until all output buffers are empty. So we start by delivering all messages. And then we perform completion events on each process until all input buffers are empty. So this is, is called a round. And in uh, a synchronous system, every execution is admissible, but it has to obey the constraints on first deliver or messages, do computation, and then do computation steps. Right? And every process takes an infinite um, steps and every message is delivered. So we see it here. So again, so you can think of the execution happens in round. So round one followed by round two followed by round three and so on. And what happens in each in each uh, round? you deliver all messages and then uh, perform computation steps in all processes and uh, that will uh, produce new message in the output buffer. And then we continue to the next round. So one way of um, seeing this is you can see if you look to an execution and we look to a round, you start by delivery events. And then comp events until um, no more comp event that can be performed and then this is round i and then you continue with the next round round i plus one okay that's it thank you